Blake Sims wasn't supposed to be the starting quarterback for Alabama. For a long time, Alabama's coaches didn't even know what to do with him. After signing with the Tide, Sims spent the first couple seasons bouncing between safety, wide receiver, running back, and then finally quarterback. After AJ McCarron left, Sims was the Crimson Tide's only returning quarterback with game experience. But Alabama's coaches were so unsure of his ability to lead the team, they decided to bring in Florida State transfer Jay Coker to compete with Sims for the starting job. Many expected Coker to win the starting position. It almost seemed like a given. Sims, who came in to finish out blowout games, was considered to be yet another backup option in case something were to happen to Coker. However, Blake Sims ended up winning the starting quarterback job and gave Alabama one of the greatest seasons in the history of the program. Before we get to today's video, make sure to hit that subscribe button and turn on those notifications. I post a ton of calls college football content, so if you're a college football fan, then this is definitely the place for you. Not earning respect was nothing new for Blake, who had consistently dealt with that throughout his young career. After he started a quarterback as a freshman and a sophomore at Cass High School in Cartersville, Georgia, college recruiters finally began noticing him. When he was asked of his coaches for the recruiting letters, according to his father, the coach told him that the colleges were wasting their time because he was nothing more than a Juco quarterback. After Blake told his father what happened, the family decided to move and pack things up, heading to Gainesville, about 55 miles northeast of Atlanta, so he could run a spread offense at Gainesville High School. After transferring, he passed for 2,800 yards and ran for over 800 yards with 49 total touchdowns as a junior. The next season, he passed for 2,300 yards with 28 touchdowns while rushing for under 900 yards, leading his team to the class AAA state championship game. As if it was difficult enough for Blake Sims trying to prove to people that he was worthy of being a starting quarterback, he also had another obstacle to overcome. When he arrived at Gainesville High School, he was behind in meeting the NCAA's minimum academic standards to play FBS football. Two of his teachers prepared a plan to help him become eligible, which required him to retake many of the courses he'd already completed at his previous high school. He was very capable, but nobody ever made him do the work, one of his teachers said. They were only worried about keeping him eligible so he could play. Blake met with both teachers every morning and after school during his last two years of high school. We were like his second mothers, another teacher said. We held his nose to the grindstone. He never once said he didn't want to do it and never asked, do we have to do this today? He really respected the time adults were investing in him. There was no student on the campus taking the workload he was taking. During this time, Blake failed to show up only once for his academic appointments. We had to call his dad. Blake showed up the next day and broke down and cried. It was as if he just failed a class. It wasn't that he was getting special treatment. He had a goal and wanted to go to college. It was what he wanted and we were there to support him. It was easy to help him and support him because he wanted it so badly. After Blake signed a national letter of intent with Alabama on February 3rd of 2010, it was widely reported that he was in danger of being an academic casualty. Three days later, when Gainesville High's basketball team played an important region game at Flowery Branch High, some of the rival school students were wearing t-shirts that read Sims equals Juco. Well, Blake scored 24 points in the team's victory. Then Blake proved everyone wrong and signed with Alabama as opposed to taking the Juco route that everyone thought he would. However, shortly after Alabama defeated Texas to win the national championship, Blake backed off his verbal commitment to the Tide. Lane Kiffin, who back then was still the Tennessee coach, had convinced Blake that he was a perfect fit to run his offense and would be given an opportunity to start right away. Kiffin and assistant coach Ed Orgeron made an in-home recruiting visit to seal the deal. They spent all day at his place and it seemed like they were a match made in heaven. However, what Lane Kiffin failed to discuss with Blake was the fact that he was in talks with USC about potentially becoming their next head coach. Just a day after spending the day with Sims and his family, Kiffin announced he was leaving Tennessee to become USC's coach. Kiffin called Blake's father and asked if Blake would go with him to Los Angeles. His father said that there was no chance he was going to leave and play that far away from home. And just like that, Blake was in a difficult position. Although it would be awkward, he wanted to get back in touch with Nick Saban and tell him that he had made a huge mistake. I was glad it happened because Blake was depressed, his father said. He grew up knowing that his word was his bond. He told Coach Saban that he made a mistake. There were schools where he could have started right away, but he made a commitment to Alabama. Blake bought into the whole Alabama thing. However, Sims would have to wait at Bama. He sat behind AJ McCarron for three seasons. He could have transferred. He likely could have started somewhere else. Why wait for three years just to have a chance to get an opportunity to start when you could have started in so many places? Well, Blake did, and it was the best decision he could have made. After waiting four years for a chance to start a quarterback, Blake Sims saw his window open briefly when AJ McCarron graduated. But when Alabama announced the impending arrival of Jay Coker, a big-armed, highly-touted quarterback who had recently lost a close quarterback battle to Heisman Trophy winner Jameis Winston to Florida State, that window seemed to close. Just like that. 
For years, Blake was the ultimate team player, watching from the sidelines and playing multiple positions in practice as Alabama won two straight national championships. But he came to Alabama with a mission, to play quarterback, to be the starting quarterback, and he wasn't going to go down without a fight. So Blake and his dad began to search for a private quarterback coach who could help him break through to the next level and help him land the starting job. They eventually ended up with Mastroli, a former journeyman professional quarterback who mentored big names like EJ Manuel, Teddy Bridgewater, and Taj Boyd. When Alabama's preseason camp opened in early August, the coaching staff saw a completely different quarterback from the year prior. I knew my team didn't doubt me. That was the main thing. I wanted to show them that I was capable of being their leader and could lead them to victories. I knew once I got on the field, I was going to be a positive leader and fulfill my role. As Sims battled Coker for the starting job throughout preseason camp, it was pretty clear as to who was winning, at least to the teammates. Here's what Alabama center Ryan Kelly said. I think from the spring game until now, Blake has been a competitor. He's been a competitor ever since I've known him. He's been in the film room, learning the offense, and knows it from a variety of positions. He's a lot like AJ. They're both great leaders in the huddle, and know the other guys in the huddle are more important than them. They're both selfless leaders. Here's what Mastroli had to say. I thought he would do well. I thought he had it all together to where he could win the job if he was given a fair opportunity, which is what Alabama has always done. He was really pushing me more with texts like, I'm ready to go. Let's get to work. He's pushing me to challenge him more out on the football. You could see that confidence we talked about. Man, there's a guy coming in here, and there's a guy here. Take the job. All offseason, Blake Sims trained harder than he ever did in his life. He wanted to improve his game, and he wanted to do whatever it took to win that starting quarterback job at Alabama. When Sims had his first opportunity to show that he was the better quarterback, he struggled. In Alabama's spring game, he went 13 of 30 passing for 178 yards and two interceptions. It was so bad that Nick Saban said a 10-year-old boy approached him after the game and asked, do we have a quarterback other than Blake Sims? After that outing, fans completely wrote him off, saying they wanted anyone other than Blake to be the team's starting quarterback. But that didn't discourage Sims, as he worked his tail off all summer and continued to improve his skills. And by the time fall camp arrived, Coker wasn't quite as polished as everyone would have hoped for. So Saban decided to go with the experienced quarterback in Blake Sims to start the season. Blake played all but a handful of garbage time snaps, leading Alabama to a 10-point win over West Virginia in the Georgia Dome, in front of a lot of family and friends of Blake Sims. He threw for 250 yards and rushed for 40, but he didn't have a single touchdown. The following week against Florida Atlantic, Sims totaled 250 yards and had three touchdowns in Alabama's win. Then, he had 200 yards and three touchdowns in a win against Southern Miss. After three fairly easy wins to begin the season, Alabama was faced with their toughest matchup as they were set to face the Florida Gators. This was the game that Blake Sims solidified himself as Alabama's starting quarterback for the remainder of the season. He completed 70% of his passes while throwing for 445 yards, the second most ever by an Alabama quarterback at the time. He also threw four touchdown passes. Blake Sims had 300 yards midway through the second quarter. Had Alabama not been up by so much, he easily could have topped 500 yards. Whoever's doubting Blake at this point four games in, look at what he did today, Ryan Kelly said. He's a great quarterback, and we're glad to have him here. Following his incredible performance against Florida, Sims and Alabama fell to Ole Miss on the road. Sims didn't have a good game as he threw a costly interception and didn't have a touchdown. Alabama fell in the rankings to number 7 after the loss. But Blake and the Tide responded, winning their next three games. Over that stretch, Blake Sims had nine touchdowns and helped Alabama climb back to number four in the rankings. November 8 would be a difficult task, though, as the Tide had to go on the road to play number 14 LSU. It was a back and forth game, but a field goal from LSU gave the Tigers a three point lead with under a minute remaining. Blake Sims remained calm and drove the tie down the field in the final seconds, getting them into field goal range. Alabama tied the game up, and the game went to overtime. In the first OT, Blake Sims threw a touchdown pass to DeAndre White, putting Alabama on top. They held LSU and won the game. Alabama won the next two games after that, and Blake Sims was really good. He totaled 450 yards and three touchdowns. Then, to close out the season, Alabama welcomed Auburn to town. Sims lit up the stat sheet, completing 74% of his passes while throwing for over 300 yards with four passing touchdowns. He also ran in the touchdown as well. Alabama won, and they went on to play in the SEC title game against Missouri. Sims finished that game with just under 300 yards and two touchdowns as Alabama picked up the win, advancing to the college football playoff. Though Bama was the number one seed, they lost to number four Ohio State. Sims was underwhelming as he threw for only 237 yards with three costly interceptions. Ohio State went on to win it all, and that was the final game for Blake Sims in an Alabama uniform. Blake Sims finished the season with 3,487 passing yards, which at the time was the most in a single season 
season in Alabama history. His 28 passing touchdowns were the second most in the season at the time as well. Overall, it was a great year for Sims. This was a guy who stuck it out, waited his turn, overcame adversity, and at the time, was considered to have one of the greatest seasons from a quarterback in Alabama history. Although he had a fine combine, Blake Sims went undrafted during the 2015 NFL Draft, as many people expected. Teams didn't really view him as a quarterback at the next level. He attended the Packers rookie orientation camp and received a tryout for the Redskins, but both of those teams didn't have any interest in him at quarterback. They wanted to try him out at running back or wide receiver to see if they could utilize him there. After not landing an NFL spot, Sims was signed by the Toronto Argonauts of the Canadian Football League on May 28, 2015. However, his time with the team was short-lived as he was released a week later. He was then signed by the Saskatchewan Rough Riders of the CFL on July 29th of 2015, but he was cut just two months later, having been on the active roster for only one game. He was then re-signed a month later, but didn't see the field at all and was released again in December. In July of 2016, Blake left the country and headed to Australia. He joined the Wollongong Devils of the National Gridiron League. The following year, he was back in America and was signed to the Atlanta Falcons practice squad. His time there was short though, as he was released a week later. Then, in December of 2016, he was signed to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers practice squad. He signed a reserve future contract with the Bucks on January 2nd, but was later waived in August. After his release by the Buccaneers, Blake was assigned to the Birmingham Iron of the Alliance of American Football League. In the league's quarterback draft, he was retained by the Iron with their second round selection. He was placed on the injured reserve on February 27th and waived from injured reserve on April 1st of 2019. Currently, Blake Sims is on the Spokane Shock roster of the Indoor Football League. They're set to kick off their season in April of 2021. In addition, he's also kicked off his acting career as he recently played a role in the Disney Plus movie, Safety. He posted this on his Instagram page. He played a quarterback for Florida Atlantic in the movie. Overall, what a wild and crazy ride it's been for Blake Sims. First, his crazy journey just to get to Alabama. Then, the fact he waited his turn for years and ultimately won the starting quarterback job. Then, defying the odds and having one of the best seasons ever from an Alabama quarterback. Although his professional career hasn't gone the way he would have liked, he's still getting the chance to play the game he loves so much, and he appears to be enjoying every second of it. Well, that wraps up today's video. If you haven't done so yet, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and turn on those notifications. If you love college football, then this is definitely the place for you. As always, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you all in my next video.